15 overhead variances. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And for some related videos on variances, you can go to Cost Accounting Videos 9, 11, and 14. Let's go back to the very beginning. Overhead is defined as costs that cannot be directly assigned to a product. You can think about home office costs for a company. They can't be assigned to the product or service that you're delivering. We have some overhead costs that are variable. We have some that are fixed. Let's talk about variable first. What is causing us to incur variable overhead costs? And the typical cost drivers, the things that make costs happen, are typically machine hours, labor hours, and processing time. And of those, most test questions will be about machine hours and labor hours. When we get to the bottom, we will find two types of variances for variable overhead, spending variance and efficiency variance. Spending means you pay more or less for your overhead than you budgeted. Efficiency variance deals with usage. You used more or less overhead than you budgeted. So one is spending, think about rates. One is efficiency, think about usage. I flipped over to the uh, variable overhead variance spreadsheet and I put the cost drivers here at the top. The best way to understand this is to move left to right. And remember that on the far left for variances we've got our actual costs and at far right we have the most uh, costs that most closely relate to budgeted or standard items. You will also see that the three columns have some things in common. Actual hours is in the first two columns standard variable overhead rate is in the last two columns so let's define what these mean actual variable variable overhead you incurred this far left column is what actually happened you had a certain number of hours we're using hours in this case you had an actual rate that you paid so what you actually wrote a check for was sixty seven hundred and forty dollars the middle column looks at variable overhead using actual hours. So we take the actual hours from co the column at the far left and we multiply that times the standard variable overhead rate that we expected and in this case you'll see at the bottom it's two dollar it's um, two dollars per machine hour two dollars per machine hour. So we're talking about machine hours as our cost driver in this example. At the far right we have the flexible budget for variable overhead at standard hours, so note the difference. Both of these relate to the flexible budget, but the one on the left deals with actual hours, the one on the right is standard hours. So you'll see I put in a different color the standard hours, which happen to be 3200. We use the same variable overhead rate of two dollars per hour, and then we simply multiply hours times rate in all three and we end up with a dollar amount. Since our actual was more than our standard, <clears throat> we have an unfavorable spending variance because again the difference on the spending variance has to do with rates. The hours are the same. On the efficiency side, our middle column was more than our budgeted column so as a result we have an unfavorable variance here too this deals with efficiency the rate is the same but the hours that we used is different flipping back over to PowerPoint let's go on to fixed overhead variant <clears throat> fixed overhead let's say that you have a contract where you are writing a check and it's a fixed amount for um, a service contract to fix equipment every month. Fixed overhead variance. Before we do fixed overhead variance we need to apply the fixed overhead at some sort of rate. So fixed overhead requires a calculation of a predetermined overhead rate which is our budgeted fixed overhead. Let's say we're going to spend a half a million dollars on repair and maintenance. And we're going to divide that by a planned activity, a level of activity in hours maybe machine hours or labor hours. What we then do is take the predetermined overhead rate we figured out in the second bullet point and we're going to multiply that by the standard hours, the hours that we budgeted. So 
So here's our Excel example for fixed overhead. Actual fixed overhead incurred is simply the check that you wrote for the service contract, $320,000. We had a budget amount of $600,000. Those first two columns are pretty clear. It's the third column where things get a little complicated. Because the first thing we need to do, like we saw in PowerPoint, is we need to come up with a predetermined overhead rate. And in this case, over here on the side, we take our budgeted fixed overhead, which was 600000 in the middle column. We had an expected activity level of 40000 and if we divide those two, we come up with a $15 predetermined overhead rate. What we then have to multiply that by is standard hours allowed. That calculation is at the bottom left. If we take actual units produced times the standard hours, the standard that we set for ourselves, and we come up with planned activity in hours. So that 39,000 goes up here. The predetermined overhead rate comes from the right, and if we multiply the two together, we get our applied fixed overhead. I find that in variance analysis, this is the toughest thing for people because the predetermined overhead rate is budgeted overhead divided by hours. The standard hours allowed is actual units times hours per unit. I think that's the toughest thing in, in variance analysis that students have trouble with. Actual is greater than our budgeted, so it's an unfavorable budget variance, which has to do with dollars. Our middle column is greater than our applied column. That should actually be an unfavorable variance. I'm going to change that while we're here. Volume has to do with activity. Budgeted has to do more with dollars. That's the end of cost accounting 15. We have a three hour-long sessions on essential topics and cost accounting that you can sign up for. It's offered year-round. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, you'll find a listing of all of our videos on our website. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and small group chat sessions, stltest.net is our web address. Here's our email and our phone number, and we will see you next time.